Hello, the internet Saffron here, going back into a summer with the Shiba Inu. And we've been, we were re-challenged by a Hayfen, and we're in the Serena now, and now we gotta figure out what to do with her. We've trapped her, we've got her pinned. What do we wanna do with Hayfen? All right, so we ask about her true opinion of me all these years, attempt to sort out some misunderstandings before fighting, just eliminate her, don't waste time. Ugh. Let's attempt to reason with her. Let's see if we can't get through. For good measure, I bite down on her neck again. In my zealousness, my muscle memory fails me. I feel my teeth pierce her skin. Ah! She winces as I press down, deepening the wound, but not by more. This was definitely not allowed in the past arenas. But at this point, the reality emulation program should have immediately broadcast a warning for my first transgression. Hey, Fen, look, I really want to tell you how I feel before it all ends again. Even as the words leave my mouth, I feel like a fraud. Injuring like her like this probably isn't helping turn her around her turn around her perception that I am a monster. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, yeah, let me convince you by biting your neck. I just want to have a chance to admit my wrongs since I never was able to. Her opinion of me was already so solidified. She just glares at me part 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 Partly in pain and partly as if she can't believe I have the audacity to bring up. Okay, anyway, let's let's try reading that again, shall, shall we? She just glares at me, partially in pain and partially as if she can't believe that I have the audacity to bring up the topic, especially in this situation. You can stop right there. No matter what you're going to say, you're disgusting. She starts flailing again against my hold, but thankfully her efforts are weaker than before due to the pain. Sorry, Hayfen. I had to do it. Just give me a moment, please. It's not about Fanchu. It's not about the way I treated you. I'm sorry I assumed everything on your behalf. I should have respected and listened to what you had to say. I'm the o I only listened to myself and ignored your ideas and agency, all the while thinking I was doing everything for you. I feel her stop struggling underneath me, but she's listening. I guess that's why our entire alliance was so harmful to you. In the past, I thought I was doing the right thing. I realized it was only controlling you. And now I totally understand why you chose to conspire with Fan Shu instead. Hey, Fen is quiet. Then she nods weakly. You know what? I'm glad you realized that. Let's just end this. Eliminate you. Eliminate me. You have the upper paw. Ha, <sighs> sure. But yeah, if I could, I would let you win. Like I promised you last time. But this time, I just really, really need to keep the feather, okay? And with that, I feel down her torso with her paws. I feel down her torso with her paws. Her eyes are on me, but she doesn't resist. I feel her head and pendant and crush it. I'm back in this body. So tired of this body, cumbersome and heavy. My body so heavy and leaning on another dog, I can barely make it out. Oh, leaning on another, I can barely make out that it's Max. Thanks for keeping me safe, Moashi. Max rests in his bed and I can only sink into the sheets, lacking the strength to pull them up higher to my chin. Sometime later. <laughs> I meet with Queen Lee the night in, the, in the night market again. Okay, so now we're back to searching for Sid's brother. <laughs> sure, sure, why not? She says she's gathered more information about my brother. Last time we spoke, she said she would try to dig up some security camera footage. I wonder if a tip of... I wonder if her tip is about that. I've also tried investigating on my own, but to no avail. I went to check out the two stations that Chu Wen had rigged his MRT transaction records to show day, day after day, NJ Station and KH Station. I wonder if instead of having rigged the records, he really, he really did live in one of those areas after I left the island. But the transaction time stamps are caninely impossible. No dog could physically scan its pendant at the MRT gates consistently down to the millisecond. Regardless, after visiting NJ Station and KH Station, my trail had run cold. I have no idea about Chun Wen's fate. I have no idea what he could be doing in those two locations. I'm so ashamed that I had ran away, but that's what I am trying to fix now. I want to know where he is. I want to know how he's doing. And there's just this feeling that something is wrong. Why set the transaction time to 9 to 5? Is it a hint pointing to a work facility? Was his brother actually Fan Shu? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it could have been. A dog of his ranking wouldn't have that sort of activity pattern anyhow. Day to day, he wouldn't even need to use public transit if he wished. 
though I wouldn't put it past them to take transit just to try it. I ordered an IU jelly lemonade, my favorite drink. Well, second to bubble milk tea. Just after I get my order, return to my seat. I spot Kui Lee coming in. For fun, I don't wave to her. Just curious to see how long it takes her to find me. But she spots me very quickly. Hey there, you are. Well, considering if he's wearing the same gray sweater all the time. His favorite gray sweater, I might add. Hey, there you are. Hi, Kui Lee. She plops down across from me. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm all right. I hope you have something helpful for me today. I do, in fact. Though you're not going to ask me out how I'm doing? Cold and straight to business as usual. Ha. Huh? How are you doing? Queely grins cheekily, smug that I listened to her. The truth is, she's grown on me, despite my efforts not to get too close. After the initial distance I put between us, she's yet to demonstrate any ulterior motive. Hopefully, this won't be a mistake. I've made so many mistakes in the past, trusting dogs that offer me a deal too good to be true. Well, well, I've been good. I've been great. Just waltzing my way around town as only a Labrador can. <laughs> That's cute. Are you happy now? That response wasn't anything of substance. I didn't even need to know that. <laughs> Does it enhance our relationship or trust? Why would you care if I asked how you're doing? Because it's polite, Sid. Just be polite. It's small talk. I know. I can relate with that. It's annoying. I don't really <laughs> like... Because yeah, that's a typical answer. How are you doing? Fine. Great. Okay, let's get on to business. <laughs> uh, at this point, I'm just messing with her. A part of me is just curious as to how she would respond. Well, your answer was also just, I'm good, all right, I'm all right. Which is typically just a canned response. You're right, exactly! <laughs> but the way you said, I'm all right, makes me feel like it's not all right. So there was some information to be gleaned, and therefore it wasn't a useless question. From that, I think to be certain. I think I deserve to be judged based on my even ground here. Okay, okay, fine. You're right, I'm not that all right. I'm feeling a bit down, in fact. I tried poking around the two locations from the travel logs. I didn't get any results. The area was just too broad, and I know nothing about how my brother is related to those two areas. You know, I'm a bit surprised you even admit that you're feeling down. The Sid I research would never say that. Yeah, I would never say something like that to a busybody stranger like you. I stick out my tongue, try to make it clear I'm just joking. Though to be honest, I have mellowed down considerably since those arena years, if I do say so myself. But you know, some habits do remain. In the re-challenge re arena with Hey Fen yesterday, I was afraid of the sides of, of me it reawakened. And I was afraid of how quickly my mind relapsed to scheme ruthlessly, ruthlessly against others. Yeah, that explains why you're still so rude and cold. Even though I'm the one that gave you the last solid lead you have about your brother. Maybe this one will make you really warm up to me. She playfully makes a flourish with her paws. I take a sip of my lemonade. The IU jelly is so juicy and refreshing good. I'm listening. Well, I was able, oh. Sudden music change. <laughs> Dramatic music. Well, I was able to get some security footage. The unfortunate part is that there's still no real sign of him on the dates after the final arena. Right. I suppose that's it then. The lead is that. There's no trace of him. Say, Queely. Yes, Sid? I'm going to be frank with you. How about Sid? I'm going to be Sid with you. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. Her ears perk up and she looks at me attentively, but also in a way that seems like she's bracing for my for a rude comment or joke. Not, not because I fully trust you, but you know, it might be helpful to the investigation. You know what? I'll take that. Though my instincts tells me it's a mixture of both. You're just saying it's for the investigation, so you don't have to admit you're starting to trust me. I grin at her sheepishly. That's not how it works. But anyway, back on topic. I'm really concerned about whether my brother is even, if he's even alive. Queely lets out a heavy sigh. Right, I get it. You haven't seen him in ages. I nod. You have no idea where he might be. I nod again. <laughs> the island is a dangerous place. I nod again, again. <laughs> For dogs that don't rank high, like your brother, I... My point is, there's no reason for him to be in danger. It's more likely that he's gone into hiding. Right? I want to object the pre... I want to object the previous day's arena encounter coming to mind. 
I have the highest ranking for dog's sake, and I still get threatened and targeted. Maybe Chun Wen is being targeted as well, despite not being the bearer of the feather. I think I will tell Kui Li about the re-challenge arena when I have the chance. I think I trust her enough to do. I think I trust her enough to. <laughs> Say, she... So, <laughs> I've been reading too long. It's starting to blur. So, say he is alive. Is there anything in the footage that to support that? Well, in the footage of the days before your last arena, he physically showed up at the stations around 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. But the signs, timestamps when the cameras captured him scanning his pendant aren't the exact same as what's on the transaction logs. For example, the logs show 9 daily, but on the cameras it's more of a caninely possible situation, such as 901.53. He would arrive on time, but since there are other dogs in front of him, he couldn't control exactly when he scans his pendant on the gate. Hmm. Another interesting thing that the footage shows is that he was wearing some sort of uniform. With that, she plucks a photo out of her bag. It's the same uniform for a few days in a row, before the day of the final arena. I think this could be a hint. I squint and peer close at the picture. It's very blurry and hard to make out the lettering on the uniform. It's likely a logo, and just being able to have the image captured is a great lead. Do you recognize this uniform at all? I wish, but no. Do you? I have some ideas, but didn't have time to double check. I'll send you a list of anything remotely similar to it, and maybe something will ring a bell. I guess I'm a bit surprised. The reason I didn't do more in-depth research is that I thought you'd recognize something that your brother wore so often. Not to make you feel bad about it or anything, I'll just do a more thorough check of business and work facilities in the area. Well, you're right to be surprised. We are siblings after all. It's a safe, safe assumption that I might know something, but the truth is we weren't living together at the time anymore. Sure, we messaged and met up now and then, but I was focused on my higher tier arenas, and so was he. At the time, it seemed like everything was coming up, coming to an end so soon. So I just toughened it out, barely in contact with anybody. I knew he was doing well in his arenas, but who'd have known that our brackets would meet just like that? Haha, <laughs> it was a bracket that made the news for sure, but it wasn't half as scandalous as the news when, I, when the winner just ran away with a very prized feather that kept dogs motivated to win the arenas. I mean, I knew it was unavoidable, of unavoidable to be talked about, but I wasn't around to know what was said about me. I've still been too ashamed to ask Max about what happened after I left. Could also look up news articles, but same thing, too embarrassed. Don't worry about it. It was most, uh, mostly unfounded speculation. Only, you know, the truth of what happened. It's your life. I guess so. Anyway. I'll hold on to this photo, and you should send me a list of places you think it might be from. Yep, there's a list that I quickly generated from an image recognition search. I just haven't gone through them manually yet to see what might make sense. That could be our next step. Thanks a lot for the help. You're welcome. You know what? Wanna go to the two stations and walk around? Maybe we'll have it upon something. Hey, that's a great idea. I finished my beverage and washed the sweet aftertaste down with a sip of water. I put the photo of my brother securely inside my sweater and we set off. Whoa, 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 shit, no, 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 no! Oh, no, stop! Oh, shit! <laughs> Damn it! I don't know what happened! <laughs> back, 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 back! <laughs> I didn't mean to hit the button. I just had to put my controller down. I just wanted to put my controller down. That's all I wanted to do. Okay. Well, hold on. We'll, we'll, we'll have to pause. I'll, I'll get back to this. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. I was a damn person. Uh, sure balls. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Finish my rubbish, blah, 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 blah. Photo of brother in the pocket. Okay, so while we're at the station, <laughs> and, oopsies. Okay, anyway, so then. At the MRT, I used my usual method to enter the stations, hiding my pendant face. First, we traveled to NJ Station, New Jersey. It's near the central zone, two stops down the green line from our current location. We decided to comb the area street by street. Queeley pulls up a map on her wrist phone, and we stroll down one street, then walk around one block, covering all sides. We then move on to the next block. By the way, Queeley, I need to tell you something. Queeley looks over and nods, signaling her attention. So I was challenged as some sort of arena rematch yesterday. Queeley stops in her tracks, her expression concerned. Go on. It was one of the runners up from my ninth arena. 
Somehow she found me after my lunch with Max. I didn't believe her at first, but when she took out her pendant, mine reacted to it. We entered an arena generated for just the two of us. But this re-challenge arena was some sort of replay of the actual arena that happened between the two of us. It was weird. I had the consciousness of the me in the past arena. I don't know if, it, if that makes sense. It wasn't a new arena from scratch, but like I said, a re-challenge. That's the term the challenger used. But both of us were free to act as we wished. But the other participants in the arena all acted the same as they did in the past, or only changed minorly in reaction to me or the challenger's new reactions. It's like we were given the chance to change what we would have liked to change, and the arena would have run a course with the decisions of our present selves. But I already knew what happened in the past arena. That's the thing. So that knowledge helped me deal with the other participants, even if I was clueless as to how the re-challenge arena worked at first. I was able to outwit the challenger herself as well, and so I won this one. And that's why I'm worried that if I'm being targeted and allowed to be re-challenged one-on-one, -on -one, the same could have happened to my brother as well. Quili is silent, processing the information. Did this challenger tell you what she would be getting out of this? She said that if any re-challenger wins, they will get the Feather of Truth. Just like that? I shrug. She wasn't very clear about it, but my pendant reacted to hers, so I imagined something was programmed in, the pl in place. You remember how an official RAI... RAI... I don't know how I misread that. ARI regulated arenas. We go to those rooms and then we are connected to the emulated reality with our pendants? Our pendants still connected us, but this time out in the open, not in the ARI arenas, and just one-on-one. -on -one. Interesting and strange, but I believe it. Though it's so unfair that they could just take the feather if they win. Decades of your hard work down the drain just like that? Perhaps it is unfair, but maybe it's just righting the wrong that the feather went to writing the wrong that the feather went to someone like me. Sounds like someone's feeling awfully guilty about the whole feather bearer thing. Guilty? I guess I've never kept it a secret from Max. You'd be surprised how offended dogs get when you have second thoughts about the prize dangling in front of their noses year after year while they're forced to participate in the arenas. It's not like every dog cares about the feather. Most just want the high ranking so they pretty much can do what they please on the island. You can live a life fine without the feather itself, which is not the sole purpose of the arenas. I just feel hypocritical speaking ill of holding such power when I'm the one that holds it. Yeah, interesting. As we continue walking, I spot a sign that has similar red lighting to Chun Wen's uniform in the photo and take it out to compare. Hmm, do you think that could be the logo? Ma Mao Enterprises. <clears throat> See, red font, slightly slanted. It's missing that oval around it, though. Hmm, you're right. Well, if it's an older photo, maybe they just changed their logo. Features, font, font set, whoop. <laughs> font underscore size color. Uh, perhaps one hot encoding of flourishes around the word. Yeah, uh, what the heck? What are you talking about? Oh, sorry, just a habit. Let's keep looking. We head down the next block. I suppose he used to work and she used to work. I keep saying he. Because the gray sweater is kind of throwing me off. Um, but she used to work in tech in K9 Da. We head down the next block. Queeley pulls up her hologram map and marks the route we've walked so far. I'm just wondering, what were you expecting when you were grinning for the when you were gunning for the feather? Like what did you plan to do with it after you won? If you had any specific plans for it at all? Well it's funny because in the beginning, as a puppy, I wasn't interested in the feather in the slightest. The challenger from yesterday was actually one of the dogs that spurred me to aim for higher than I would have. Her name is Hey Fen. Hey Fen? That name rings a bell. Didn't you two have a really big follow? I remember reading about it on some news articles. <laughs> I guess that happened. Want to talk about it? I'm not sure about that. Oh, come on, just a bit. You seem to have something to say about it. Tell her what I think about the folly of this song. Ask her what information she had. No, I'll tell her about it. <sighs> it's just difficult to talk about after I've tried so hard to bury it. But I might as well tell you a bit. It was Arena 9. I, I guess by that time, I already had a reputation for winning my past arenas. All of them. Dogs were intimidated and dealt with that in various ways. For example, you know that superstition that dogs with white dots on their front legs or have white paws are unnatural? 
Queenly nods. From my research, I found that Hayfen stated that you are a white dot in many interviews, meaning you are a descendant of a family with a very, very violent history in the arenas. She used it to support her claims that you killed Fan Shu on purpose. Okay. You already know so much, huh? I'm impressed. Why'd you ask me about the fallout then? Well, things that happen can be looked up in archives. Only you can tell me your real thoughts and feelings. I guess so. I mean, she wasn't wrong. I do have a white dot, but I have no idea why it even matters. Some distant ancient ancestral tie to dogs I have no idea about? Plus, assuming every everyone with a white dot is evil is just putting nature 100% over nurture. It's an excuse to justify how I won over her, in my honest opinion. But yeah, the real issue was why was that I really I liked Hafen. I actually wanted to swim together. Now that I look back, I have no idea why I was so attracted to her. I would have even thrown a match so that she would win before the betrayal happened. You see, after that arena, I learned that I learned to not trust any dogs. Don't make any real alliances. If I did, I was mentally prepared for them to betray me at any point. I was ready to do the same. Hey, Fen's betrayal taught me that what I need is freedom. Freedom from other dogs' wants and desires. Without that freedom, I will always be at the mercy of another. It seemed reasonable that, in order to be free of the whims of dogs, I would need to hold all the power for myself. I glance at Queeley, who's been silent. Hopefully this isn't boring her, but she asked. Sorry, went on a bit of a rant there. Am I losing you here? Nah, go on. So yeah, that's what happened. And there you have it, my honest opinion. Maybe my reaction to the betrayal was overly dramatic. Burned by a romantic attraction that was spreading rumors that I'm a white dot murderer. Time to take over the island. But I was young, and choosing to make the most of it took me far in the end. And choosing to make the most of it took me far in the end. I do regret how I was. You could have called me ruthless in the arenas, but I'd say it was more pragmatic. Seems like you're just trying to justify your guilt, just like Hey Fen was. God, right to the Kokoro. The Kokoro? Sometime later. We cover another two blocks, scanning the signage for the logo on my brother's uniform with some false alarms. I take some photos of those we confirm to be not a match, just in case, of course. Just in case. Of course, I also photograph the ones that are still ambiguous. That's a lot of photos to sort through. I wonder if I could figure out which dogs are going to re-challenge me. Because, yeah, you're taking the ones that could be the match and the ones that aren't a match? I just... I, well, I suppose then if you come across it again. I don't know. Anyway. I wonder if I could figure out which dogs are going to re-challenge me. I suppose it's only dogs that have participated in an arena with you. Hence the re-challenge. Yeah, the fact that the re-challenge arena held the state or the memories of what happened in the past, points to them being against dogs I have competed against. Say, Queely, have you competed in the arenas? I have. But it's strange. It's more like I have memories of them. What do you mean? You know that whole waking up feeling? Like your consciousness is a bit woozy? Like the memories created in the arenas are trying to fuse into your physical body? I kind of get what you're saying. The way I think it works is that the memories are being downloaded back to your physical body. That might be what you're describing. Yeah, I do have memories, but not the feeling that you get when you know a memory, memory is 100% correct. Like a corresponding muscle memory isn't there. Hmm, I don't think I noticed a lack of muscle memory. To me, it felt like I did physically carry out the actions in the arenas. Though that could have been just a trick of the mind to reconcile my memories with my physical body. I wonder if your laboratory physique or something genetic isn't fully compatible with the ARI hardware, if the muscle memory is something that is completely absent. Yeah, maybe. We walk along in comfortable silence. We're almost at the end of the last street we plan to scan manually. It's funny how this, feeling's like, this feels like a regular afternoon in Canine Da, strolling down the street with a lab, chit-chatting. I'm so curious how she ended up here. Maybe she's also a type of feather holder. What if she's a descendant of the fabled species of dogs that once lived on the island? Ha, huh, my imagination is pretty wild sometimes. Either way, I think our actions so far make her trust just trustworthy enough. Although, there's still the deeply rooted thorn in my heart. The fear of another betrayal. But I wonder, will Queely be different? Say, Queely, I don't normally ask this. I really don't. But what is your rank? No worries. I figured you'd want to know. Wouldn't want to entrust your personal feelings and inf information to some random dog. 
She takes out her pendant and flips its face up to show me. Nine large orbs are filled, with seven of the smaller ones filled. You're a 97, huh? Not bad. Thanks for showing me. Queely puts her pendant back in her jacket. Okay, she's a 97 out of 100? No problem, like the big orbs would be like 10? And then the little orbs? We looked out at the last few buildings in the area. Doesn't seem like there's any matching... Your brother's hint might be pointing to areas even further from the MRT station. Like I said, I'll run a graphical analysis for first thing when we get back. All right then, thanks. I should go, but let me know what you find. All right, Commander Sid. <laughs> All right, Commander Sid. See you back on the Normandy. <laughs> really? That? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Later. Why do I feel she just made a joke I'm not getting? Right? Exactly. Okay, so we're back at Max's apartment. I think that's a good place to stop it after my little faux pas. <laughs> Uh, so we'll continue the search for Sid's brother in the next episode. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, ring that bell, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all later. Let's make sure to save it. Save good. Save good.